This is the tenth in a series of lectures for students in MS 2014 and MS 3014 at University College Cork. In this lecture, we'll talk about formal power series. A call from um, a calculus that we have expressions for functions like this is the sine of x is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus da, 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 an infinite sum of terms adding up to the sine function. This is a, a power series or a Taylor series. This is a, is a power series around x equals 0. We could also allow a power series, although we won't do much of that, but we could in principle allow them to be around other points, like for example the logarithm is uh, the sum n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 x minus x minus 1 to the n over n. Um, so this is said to be around x equals 1 because it has x minus 1's in it rather than x's in it. We want to work over uh, a fairly general collection of rings or fields, so we want our coefficients not to be not real numbers anymore. And to make sense out of that, we're going to have to just ignore convergence because we don't really have a notion of converging in arbitrary fields or arbitrary rings. So for us, a formal power series, formal meaning ignoring convergence, um, is just a, an infinite sum of, of powers of x with coefficients. Or we could allow powers of x and y, sums of expressions, let's say c, p, q, r, for example, x to the p, y to the q, z to the r, in variables x, y, and z. Or more generally, in any number of variables, any finite number of variables, where coefficients here, and this will be a sum over values of p, q, integer values, let's say positive integers, um, though I'll assume they're greater than or equal to zero, the, the, the numbers uh, that are used as the indices. And these coefficients, um, they can come from any ring in some ring r. Again, we don't require this sort of expression to converge because the, the word converge doesn't even make any sense here um, in an arbitrary ring. Um, it might make sense if they were real numbers or complex numbers, but it doesn't make sense for an arbitrary ring because we don't really have a notion of how, what it means for to have convergence in, in a ring. But even for ordinary um, numbers, this gives rise to new objects because we're allowing these to be just formal sums. We're not actually adding them up. Really, we're just allowing x, y, and z to be thought of as abstract variables, and we're just writing an expression in front of some powers of x, y, and z. So, for example, over the rational numbers, we can consider a, a sum like 0 factorial plus 1 factorial times x plus 2 factorial times x squared plus 3 factorial times x cubed plus dot 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 dot. And you can see that this doesn't converge um, in the usual sense of convergence in, say, real numbers. Uh, it converges only at x equals 0 because it has too rapid a growth of the, of the coefficients to make sense out of convergence anywhere else. Um, but nevertheless, it's still perfectly good for us. It's fine for us. We don't mind that things don't converge. This is a perfectly fine formal power series. It's not a convergent power series, but it's a formal power series in that we just write down some powers of x, infinitely many of them, and a coefficient in front of each. And more generally, we could have powers of x, y, z, or any other variables we like. Um, the powers have to be positive integer powers or zero powers. Um, and then coefficients coming from some ring. And that's fine. There's no need for any, any requirement of convergence. So if we have more variables, any collection of variables, say x is some x1 dot 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 xn, then we can take uh, uh, our in our we can take some uh, exponent to consist of a bunch of integers, or where these are all all the alphas are greater than or equal to zero integers, and then we simply define x to the alpha to mean x1 to the alpha 1 times x2 to the alpha 2 times da, 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 dot times xn to the alpha n. And that way we can make sense out of expressions like um, a, a power series being a sum c alpha x to the alpha for many variables. The set of all formal power series uh, over a ring r is going to be written as r of x 
where x is a variable, or where x is, for example, maybe a collection of variables. If, we're, if we make clear that it's actually given by some list of variables, we can write it like this. So remember that polynomials were written with one set of square brackets, and now we use two sets of square brackets for the for the the um, for this collection of power series, formal power series. We could also write it by writing out the variables. We have the obvious arithmetical rules. The plus, the minus, and the times are defined as usual. And if also, we can define differentiation as usual. Because we know how to do this with polynomials, and each term is a polynomial, so we just do them term by term. So for example, a sum of coefficients b alpha times x to the alpha adds to or subtracts from a sum of c alpha x to the alphas to give the sum of the b alphas plus c alphas x to the alphas. Similarly, if we wanted to multiply on one side, uh, we'd get just multiply each coefficient. Or if we multiplied on the other side, which in a general ring, which is not necessarily commutative, might be a very different thing, um, we could do that this way. We're, it's, we're acting as if the coefficient actually uh, commutes with all the x's. So we treat all the all the numbers, all the entries, all the coefficients of our expressions as if they were somehow just hopping over the x's. So here c is, of course, in the ring that we're working over. For multiplication, the rule is, of course, a little more complicated. If I take some b alphas x to the alphas and I multiply by some c alphas x to the alphas, I get the sum of, I get b, let's say, beta c gammas multiplied together, um, but that has to then be summed up over the beta plus gamma equal alphas, um, and then x to the alphas, sum over alphas. Um, so it's a bit messy, uh, the multiplication rule. It then immediately follows that if we can slide the coefficients past each other, this rule will look the same in either order. And so, in, uh, as, as a consequence, we get that the ring of formal power series in some variables over some uh, R, some ring R, is, um, is commutative as long as R is commutative. So if R is commutative, then this is commutative. And if R is a ring with 1, with identity, then that identity becomes the identity um, in, sorry, R of X uh, is a ring with one. So the power series also becomes a ring with one. So if R is a ring with one, then the power series becomes a ring with one with the same one um, sitting there as one plus zero X's, et cetera, et cetera. We can make sense out of dividing um, only in special situations because we may not, we not have one of them divide into the other very neatly. But uh, but it's clear what we mean by trying to divide um, the um, let's say we could try and divide some x alpha into some power series um, some sort of power series sum of the well, let's say just let's just try and divide a single monomial for the moment into some of the b beta x betas uh, it, it's okay if um, uh, b beta is zero uh, whenever um, all uh, wherever some uh, beta i is less than some uh, corresponding alpha i for some i, um, and uh, so we can divide them in when it when it makes sense. The intuitively obvious situation where we can divide in um, term by term, and uh, we can also differentiate. Um, we can define differentiation to variable x i applied to a power series is simply the sum, but only summing where the alpha i's are positive, where that particular, for this particular i here, that variable has to have a positive coefficient, otherwise the, the, the terms drop out because they're constant in x i, so to speak. And, um, and that gives you um, simply this expression here. Uh, we have to divide out that x i, uh, bring that to one lower power, and then bring the power up the front, as we would for differentiation if these were real numbers. But we're now allowing these b alphas to be, live in any ring. Um, so we have a, a formal notion of differentiation in any ring, uh, yeah, for a power, formal power series over any ring.
um, if uh, if b of x is some power series, uh, then we can um, define b of 0, x2, dot, 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 xn. So again, here x is some x1 to xn collection of variables. Um, we can define this to mean um, simply that we uh, that we sum up uh, we well um, we simply drop all terms b alpha x to the alpha with alpha one positive. So it's just the sum of all those terms. So it's the sum alpha i uh, equal to zero um, b alpha x to the alpha. So you drop all the other terms. So that makes sense um, even though we don't really plug, in some sense, we can't really plug values into a formal power series because they don't converge. Uh, we can still plug in the value zero because our formal power series are expanded around x equals zero. It makes sense to plug in zero for one of the variables. It's the only thing it makes sense to plug in. Anything else we tried to plug in, it wouldn't make sense. It's, it's often convenient to have some kind of notation for the coefficient of x alpha. So we can define, let's say, x beta coefficient of the sum of the b alpha x alphas to be b beta. So you can pick out that coefficient. So I'm writing x beta and then this, this bar or something like that to indicate that I mean the x beta coefficient in this expression. So for example, um, the uh, x cubed coefficient, the x cubed coefficient in the expression 1 minus 7x plus 4x squared minus 12x cubed plus 2x to the fourth is this, uh, this, this minus 12 here. So it's just minus 12. So that picks out that coefficient. The degree of, of a coefficient is, is defined as the sum of the, of the entries. So it's convenient to write, um, this is a bit strange, to write the absolute value of, of an index of alpha to mean the sum of all of its, of its entries, where alpha is some collection of non-negative integers, alpha 1 to alpha, and that we're going to use in some monomial x to the alpha. This is the, the total degree or degree of x alpha. So that's how we count degrees. Um, so for example, if we look at something like um, x to the fourth plus x cubed y plus y to the ninth, um, this term has degree four because it's got four x's in it. This term has degree four, total degree four, because it's got three x's and a y. So you add up how many of each. And this one has, of course, degree nine. One thing we can do now that we have these objects uh, at hand, which we didn't really do before with just polynomials, is to look at infinite sums. Now again, we don't know how to deal with convergence, so it's going to be very unlike the infinite sums in calculus where we added up things uh, by trying to get them to converge to something. And in this case, what we're going to do is just take formal power series and try and add up infinitely many of them. But we, we don't have any notion of convergence, so how can this ever be defined? Well, it's fine as long as um, it's defined as long as each um, xj, uh, or sorry, each fj of x has a degree uh, of its lowest term, well, lowest degree term, degree of lowest terms, degree terms, um, going to infinity with j. So uh, it starts with higher and higher and higher degree terms. Um, so we can, for example, look at um, uh, something like 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot 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 dot. Uh, that's our first function. And then add to that a function x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot 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 dot. And then plus another function, which is x squared plus x cubed plus dot 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 plus and so on. And that makes sense as an infinite sum because there's only a single one, a single constant coefficient. There are two x's. Uh, there are three x squared, so there are two x's, three x squared, and so on. There'll be four of these x cubes, and so on and so forth. So that's perfectly well defined because at each order, at each degree, 
we only had to add up finitely many terms and then they then terms ran out and then finally many of these and they ran out finally many of these and they ran out and so on so it's okay to have infinite sums as long as the uh, the degrees of the lowest terms get larger and larger and larger the same holds of course for infinite products Those are defined as long as, uh, say, f1 of x, f2 of x, da 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 da, da. Um, That's defined as long as um, uh, f, each fj of x is 1 plus something uh, here, the degree of the lowest term going to infinity. The lowest term after, after the constant. All the constants have to be 1, well, after finitely many. Should be. More, more precise. Uh, so we can have finitely many of these guys which don't have a constant 1, but after finitely many uh, values of j, we have to settle into a 1 plus some, uh, some stuff of higher degree where the degree of the lowest uh, uh, terms is going to infinity. So that just as we said before, this is for sums, we can, we can sort of neglect after finitely many terms, we don't have to worry about uh, sh ever having another term which will, which will impact something we've already calculated. So we can compute out our product at finitely many terms to give us the constant term, and then after that they're all ones, and then uh, finitely many terms give us the x term, and then after that they're all much higher than x, and so on and so forth. So we don't end up having to compute infinitely many terms. Each term is only a finite sum. So, so each uh, term in the product is a finite uh, polynomial expression in the, in the terms. Um, of the of the various f's. Um, naturally, we're curious about when we can divide because we know how to add, subtract, and multiply, but division is uh, is sort of tricky. Um, so um, we have a nice theorem though that says that a formal power series um, in one variable. We won't worry about many variables um, over. Uh, commutative ring with identity has a reciprocal formal power series over the same ring um, if and only if if I F F if and only if it's um, constant term, that is to say the zero power of x term, um, is a unit in the ring. The proof is, is pretty straightforward. Um, I won't give all the details, just the idea of the proof. Um, well, we can rescale to get uh, the constant term to be 1. And so we write our formal power series to say fx equals 1 minus g of x. All the other terms we can put into the minus g of x term um, with g of 0 equal to 0. In other words, the constant term of g is 0. And, um, and then we know that, um, well, I'd leave you to prove actually that in any, it's a nice exercise that in any um, uh, in any commutative ring with identity, one minus x times one plus x plus x squared plus dot 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 um, is uh, is one. Uh, again, that's a nice exercise for you to check that um, expanding out the multiplication gives you this result, um, and then we just plug in, uh, replace x's by g of x's. And you get 1 equals 1 minus g of x is just f of x. And then these become 1 plus g of x plus g of x squared plus dot dot dot. That's not a complete proof because we didn't really explain how exactly is this plugging in working. Um, but we're not completely clear that how that <laughs> this last step works exactly. But it is clear that uh, intuitively that if you put g of x in instead of x, You'd expect that to work, um, so I leave you to, to to fill in all the details. So um, we can also try to compose 
these these uh, these these objects. There's something else we haven't really thought about. We've had rings which didn't have um, any infinite sums, infinite products. They also didn't have any kind of composition. If you have a polynomial uh, y equals f of x, and then a polynomial uh, z equals g of y in, poly in, in abstract variables x and y, you can of course form the polynomial z equals g of f of x by composing them. And uh, it's clear that the, the degree of the, um, of the composition, g composed with f, is the product of the degrees, degree f times degree g as polynomials. There are real problems, though, trying to do this with, uh, with formal power series, because the problem intuitively is that if, um, uh, if you were to try to put one into the other, it may have, uh, f may have a constant term, and so when you plug x is 0 into f, so you try to make some g of f of x, if f has a non-zero constant term, when you plug in x equals 0, you've got a constant, which you've got to be able to plug into g. Plugging in a constant into g, you might give an infinite sum. A non-zero constant could give an infinite sum. And so it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, without worrying about about having some notion of how to how to get things to converge, it doesn't make sense unless either um, g is a polynomial. Then we can actually plug anything into it, or um, f of zero is zero. In which case, we don't have to worry about that constant term when you plug in f of zero. X is zero. You wouldn't have to worry about having an infinite sum of numbers rather than powers of x. So that's going to work, okay? Um, if that works, then then we can actually just plug in term by term. Um, so we get uh, term by term uh, plug in and uh, uh, plug in and expand, plug in and expand, expand it out, and you can see that you just get a, a meaningful uh, composition term by term because the term of each of each degree comes only from terms of of the same or lower degrees in the in 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 the in the, in the f and the g, um, so you can't have trouble with um, very low degree terms giving in, uh, appearing infinitely often over and over again. Uh, we don't end up with that with the problem of of, of infinite expansion of this uh, of one of the terms in the in the composition. It only expands finitely many times. To see that, just note that f, if it has f of 0 is 0, f of 0 is 0 implies that there's an x in each term. At least, let's say, if it's a one variable polynomial and a, and a variable x, um, it's going to have an x in each term. And that means that when you plug, when you expand out g of f of x um, as a sum of coefficients of g, let's say, um, let's say some coefficient cj, um, f of x to the j, you're going to have at least an x to the j here inside this because you f of x has an x in each term. This has at least an x to the j in each term. And so there's only finitely many terms that, 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 that have to be added up to give a particular result. There's no problem with this thing um, at any, any finite stage that only finitely many terms can contribute to, to a particular um, to a term in the, in the composition. Let's just see a simple example of calculating it out. Um, you look at uh, our favorite exponential function, we can define this by the following expression, just 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus dot 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 dot. And it makes perfect sense as long as, um, as, long as all the, and let's say any commutative ring, we'll mostly work, just work with commutative rings. I don't want to worry too much about a commutative ring, which has to have a 1 because of this. I don't want to worry about non-commutative rings. Um, and also in which uh, all um, uh, factorials have reciprocals. Because you have to be able to divide by all these factorials. Um, for example, the rational numbers work perfectly fine. But now the problem is this has a, has a non-zero constant term, so we can't plug it into a composition. But we can plug in, if we take away the constant term, minus 1 plus exponential of x, then we can compose that with the exponential. We're allowed because we took away the constant term. And what happens with that? Well, 
the expansion for exponential is 1 plus this guy, the input to the exponential, um, plus uh, the same input uh, but squared over 2 factorial plus um, the same input again to the cube over, cubed over 3 factorial plus dot 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 dot. And I can expand out each of those now by plugging in um, this exponential uh, with ten, 1 taken over from becomes x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus dot 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 dot. Um, and then this guy is plus it's x plus da, 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 all squared, plus da, 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 and so on and so forth. And so we can actually add up terms. There's only one uh, well, it's only one term that can have an x in it because all the higher terms are brought to higher powers, 2 or higher, and so they're going to have at least an x squared in them. And so they never get that x, so you get 1 plus x. The only way you can get an x squared is from this term or this term. After that, all the, everything's cubed, and it's got at least an x cubed in it. So you get this guy has an x squared over 2, and then this guy has an x squared, and that's the x squared term plus da 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 da. So you can see how you can calculate it out step by step, order by order, all the way, and you never run into any term that has to be infinitely summed because you've always got a squared here, a cubed here, and so on. The terms are getting higher and higher and higher, so they become uh, negligible for calculating out any finite order. Eventually, you can neglect all but finally many of the terms. So now we have um, lots of operations. We can add, subtract, multiply, so you can often divide. We can um, take uh, for infinite products, infinite um, sums. What we wonder about is what about square roots or nth roots? Um, so let's take an example. Um, if we take a, a series, a uh, not a1x plus da 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 dot, and try to and multiply it to the n over some commutative ring with identity, let's say, Let's say over some, so assume it's in a commutative ring with identity, just to make things a little bit clearer, less confusing. If you expand that out, you get a naught n times. And then uh, the there are products of this guy times this guy. Um, so there's n uh, choose one ways of multiplying that by that, a naught to the n minus 1 a1x. And that's the only way we can get an x term plus dot, 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 dot. Now, um, so what we're wondering is if we can somehow invert this process. We want to try and construct an nth root. So let's suppose we want that. We want to plug this in and somehow get out a given b naught plus b1x plus dot, 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 dot. So we end up with uh, with a bunch of equations that we have to satisfy. If, you're, if you think of the a's as variables, you get to pick. And you're given, somebody gives you these b's as the the, the the knowns and the a's are the unknowns, then you have to solve the equation uh, equations that um, the given b naught value, you have to pick an a naught that gives you this b naught value, and then b1 is n choose 1 a naught to the n minus 1 a1, um, uh, and then um, b2 is um, is n1 a naught to the n minus 1 a2 plus n choose 2 a naught to the n minus 2 is a1 squared and so on and so forth goes on and on and on. I won't go, go in complete detail. I'll just let you check that you can expand. If you expand this out very carefully, you can check that you get these things like this. And at some point, you get that uh, as you go down through it, that this BL has to be given by n choose 1 a naught to the n minus L a L plus lower order terms, other well, other terms that arise from other products inside as you multiply the thing out. So we really just want to look at the solvability of these. Given the b's, can you solve these for the unknown a's? Um, so this one has to have an nth root, and that's a, that, that's a tricky question in a commutative ring, whether or not there is an nth root. For example, in the integers, which integers have nth roots? Um, but once you've solved that one, then you can plug it in here, and this is just a linear equation. Plug in here, and you'll get a linear equation, and so on and so forth, all the way down. So we can see the answer to when these things exist. We have to be able to solve this equation um, for the unknown a naught, and and then we have to be able to keep going and solve the the, the equations we get from there 
uh, so on and so forth, um, step by step. But they're just linear in the uh, in the highest unknown, and then they involve lower uh, unknowns that we've already solved for. So we get the following theorem. Um, a formal power series over a commutative ring with identity um, in one variable. So over a commutative identity in one variable. So it's a one variable series. Um, has an nth root some integer n greater than or equal to, let's say, to 2, um, as long as, what do we need? We need that um, uh, the um, n is not 0 in the ring, in the ring. We need n not to be 0 in the ring because we need to solve linear equations, and they had coefficients n. They always had n choose 1, which is just n. Um, and those were the coefficients that appeared in each of those linear equations we need to solve. Um, so that's the first thing we need to do, is to make sure that we can solve that. Um, the other thing we need to do is to make sure that the um, lowest term, um, what if the lowest term is not the is not the, um, the zero term, the A0 we saw? What if the lowest term is something else? We need the lowest term as, as a degree, a multiple of n. And the lowest degree coefficient, that was our A naught that we were looking at. Um, lowest degree coefficient um, uh, is a unit um, with an nth root in the commutative ring. Well, let, let's say with an nth root in the ring. Um, uh, okay, so why is that? Why is that going to give us everything we need? Um, well, if we had, we said the lowest term should be multiple of n, so that means that our um, our um, expansion looks something like um, a um, a multiple of n, let's say k times n, and then the next term will be the same thing plus one plus the dot. dot and that means we can rewrite this as x to the k to the n times b naught plus b1 x plus da 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 dot. And then we go back to what we just wrote about when there was when we could solve those equations. What we needed is to make sure that we could um, that we could um, take a, an nth root of this guy, and that nth root had to be a unit so that we could divide off by it the linear equations that we generated from there on. And that's it. And this guy already has an nth root. So we just had to make an nth root for that guy to make a, an nth root of the whole thing. In fact, if you're very careful about the story, you can actually see that the number of different nth roots, um, number of nth roots of this, um, of this, uh, of let's say b naught plus b1 x plus da 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 dot, is, uh, the, is just the number of nth roots of the b naught term, um, where we assume again this is a this would be some uh, unit which has an nth root. Um, the number of different it's each each choice of the nth root for this b naught term actually gave us a different answer. Um, so we constructed different nth roots out of the different um, different choices because at each step all the way along we used a, a different nth root a naught for this guy to generate all of our terms. But that was the only choice we made. Uh, was that nth root, because after that all the equations were linear equations, and so they had only one solution each. We can um, make a, a generalization of this result, um, a much stronger theorem. Um, if we look at, um, so let's suppose if, um, so p of x and y is a, f a formal power series, so not a power series, but a formal power series in two variables. Over a commutative ring with one, commutative ring with identity, 
and um, so that's going to be the first thing we assume and we'll have to assume that p of 0 is zero, uh, zero, 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 that it's um, solved at the origin. In some sense the, uh, the solution is passed to the origin roughly speaking um, and, uh, and uh, that the coefficient of y, the pure y term, the linear y term, is not zero and a unit. Then um, uh, we can solve the equation zero equals p of xy for y uh, equals y of x, a formal power series. In other words, we can find a formal power series we can plug in to the second guy and, and term when we expand it all out, term by term they all they all satisfy. All the terms are just zero. I won't give a complete proof, just the idea of the proof. Um, first of all that you can um, well uh, you can rescale uh, because the uh, rescale because we said that the y linear term was non-zero unit, you could rescale to get um, y term to be minus 1 in your ring, the, the negative of the unit. Um, and so you can write p of 0 equals p of x and y. You can write as 0 equals um, minus y plus something of x and y, which has no linear terms. And then um, you can write that as y equals q of x and y. And again, q has no linear terms. And then all we've got, got to do is to try and plug in. This is done in great detail in the notes. Um, plug in some uh, series, some formal power series. y is some a0 plus a1. Sorry, a, I want to do a1x plus a2x squared plus dot dot dot. You plug in a, uh, a formal power series. Um, and after we want, we want the solution that goes through the origin, so to speak, we were intuitively saying that this equation, p of x, y is 0, was supposed to be satisfied at the origin. So we're going to try and make one that goes through the origin that satisfies this. So I should probably have said this in here. Um, y of 0 is 0 is part of our assumptions. Um, so we can solve this by plugging in. And what we find is that each term that, sit, that pl gets plugged in here also gets plugged in here. But because this guy has no linear stuff, everything's nonlinear, it means that every term has at least um, uh, either some x's or some, or, or some x's or some y's going to, to some higher order. It means that a term of given order here um, is expressed in terms of terms that are, came from lower order which, uh, expressions in y that are multiplied up by the nonlinearity to, to, to raise them up. And so, in other words, you can recursively solve for each term here in terms of a nonlinear expression in lower order terms here. Um, so each coefficient of y pops out and expressed in terms of lower order coefficients here. So I won't do that in detail, but that's the idea of the proof. There is, of course, a kind of equation we don't get to solve this way. Um, for example, we could ask if we could solve an equation like x squared equals, um, sorry, x equals y squared for y. Um, what happens there? We were saying in this uh, theorem that you needed a, a, a non-zero linear y term. This has no, this is no linear y term. It starts off purely nonlinear. Can we solve it? And I'll leave you to check if you try and plug in any any expansion y is some a1x plus da 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 into here that it just won't work. It won't ever give you just this pure y term. Let's say this uh, x equals y squared won't work because all the terms here have an x in them, and so all the terms in the square have an x squared in them, and so you're not going to get a pure x, and so it's not possible. Um, so there's no solution like that. So what can we do if we want to solve equations that involve uh, something like this? Let's suppose we um, take a formal power series. So here's a theorem. Um, so we take um, a formal power series x equals a1y plus a2y squared plus dot 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 dot. Um, and uh, so whose um, first non-zero term, let's say a n, suppose it starts at a n, this is our non-zero guy, has an nth root. 
again, we're in a commutative ring. Um, we're working over a commutative ring with identity. Um, then um, uh, this uh, formal power series has a formal inverse function Um, but it's uh, strange enough. It's y equals y of x to the one over n, um, which we can solve term by term. So it's a formal inverse function. In other words, a formal power series which formally composes with the original power series to give the identity. Um, after uh, we introduce um, some x to the one over n to be the remainder of z, we mod out by z to the n is x, or sorry, by z to the n minus x, a polynomial in two variables. In other words, we just introduce a formal symbol, x to the 1 over n, formally introduced by uh, requiring that whenever you have n of them multiplied together, you get x. So that's a just a formal symbol we can introduce into the story. And then uh, once we have that, then we get a formal inverse function. And there is um, one such for each um, nth root of this a to the n. Each choice of an nth root for this uh, for the for the first uh, term that we come across that's not zero. So the proof for this result is um, is very straightforward. Um, we just uh, let um, well let's let's let um, B not B um, uh, B any nth root of this a n, and again we introduce introduce an x one over n as I said as a formal symbol so that when our n of the multiplied together we get our uh, we get a, a x and um, and then we'll just apply the uh, our, our theorem um, uh, to get an nth root. Um, of uh, so we get some nth root of one plus a n plus one over a n y plus a n plus two over a n y uh, squared plus da 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 um, equals let's call it uh, one plus b one y plus b two y squared plus da da da. And we know that we have our previous uh, results showed us that when we had these these roots, so we have this root. There's no problem there. Uh, and constructing our root. Um, and we can always make it be the one for which we take the nth root here to be to be the usual one. Um, and then we can apply uh, to our equation solving theorem to the equation 0 equals minus x to the 1 over n, which is we think of as a new variable, plus um, this b naught times y times 1 plus b1y plus b2y squared plus da da da. Because this equation just expands out into saying that x is then a n y to the n plus a n plus one y to the n plus one plus the top da, 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 and so on. So that solves the the um, for our that solves for our root. In the next lecture, we'll talk about resultants and discriminants.